Section 3.3 video lecture. Uh, as always, uh, I'm Dr. Scott Spaniel. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so today we're going to talk about measures of central tendency and dispersion for group data. So uh, and then weighted means. So we're going to all everything we're going to do today is almost identical to what we've done in the previous two sections, uh, at least at the beginning of class before we get to weighted mean. Um, with the exception of having to deal with the fact that it's group data, and we'll talk about how to use technology to deal with that. So let's go ahead and open up our Chapter 3 note sheets, which can be found on Blackboard or in my math lab, depending on your course format, um, and take a look at talk about weighted means. Okay, so weighted means are the more um, kind of useful thing, I think, in this, because finding approximate values isn't necessarily that useful of... Uh, uh, thing to be able to do. But weighted means are used a lot. So the weighted mean, which is x bar with a little subscript w of a variable, is found by multiplying each value of the variable by its corresponding weight, summing these products and dividing the results by the sum of the weights. It can be expressed using the formula um, x sub 1 times w sub 1 plus x sub 2 times w sub 2 plus dot 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 plus x sub n times w sub n all over w sub 1 plus w sub 2 plus dot 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 plus w sub n or in shorthand the sum of all the x sub i's times the w sub i divided by the sum of all the w sub i's. So weighted means are useful because they get used a lot um, especially uh, in things like school. So these are actually things you're running into all the time, whether you know it or not. Things like GPAs, your grade in this course, those are all weighted means. So let's look at a few examples of this. So in Marissa's calculus course, attendance counts for 5% of the grade. Quizzes count for 10% of the grade. Exams count for 60% of the grade. And the final exam counts for 25% of the grade. Okay, So those are our weights. Okay, Because those are how much each one is worth. So our weights, let's just make a little table here, are 5%, uh, 10%, 60%, and 25%. And then our data values are her scores on each. So she had 100% on attendance, 93% on quizzes, 86% on exams, and 85% on the final. And so now we can use this formula to find her grade which would be her the weighted mean here. So the weighted mean is the data value times its weight for each one over the sum of the weights. So 5 plus 60 plus, which I'm doing out of order, 5 plus 10 plus 60 plus 25. And so then we just put that in our calculator. which is 87.15%. So her grade for the course would be 87.15%. Okay. So similarly, uh, Michael and Kevin want to buy chocolates. They can't agree on whether they want chocolate-covered almonds, chocolate-covered peanuts, or chocolate-covered raisins. They agree to create a mix. They bought four pounds of chocolate-covered almonds three at three fifty per pound, three pounds of chocolate-covered uh, peanuts at two seventy five per pound, and two pounds of chocolate-covered raisins at $2.25 per pound. So in this case, uh, it's fairly straightforward which thing is the weights and which things are the value because, well, we have something that is literally a weight, right, things in pounds, and something that is literally a value, which is dollars, okay? So the way uh, we can set this up the same way, we've got our weights are 4 
three, and two, and our values are 350, 275, and 225. So then to find the weighted mean, we take the weights uh, times the values, and remember, order doesn't really matter when it comes to multiplication or addition. Okay, all over the sum of the weights. Okay. And so that's two dollars and ninety seven cents per pound okay so that's the idea so unless it's an example like this one where you literally have pound weights and values which is how we decided these normally the weight is the thing is this that's the same for everyone so in this case the weights were these um how much they count for okay so the part that's the same for everything whereas her grade was the value the thing that was different for her so at this point, if you want to try some of these, go ahead and pause the video and try these two problems on page 20, and then we'll go through them, and then that'll be the end of this video. Okay, so now that you've had a chance to try these, let's go through them. So in this case... The weights are going to be um, the credit hours, right? Because those are the things that are the same for everybody. So in this case, she got, uh, she has a five credit hour course, a three credit hour course, a four credit hour course, and another three credit hour course. And then we do the letter grade. So B, A, A, C. So that would be three, four, four, two. Okay. And in fact, as we're doing this, this is exactly the same way your GPA gets calculated. Okay, so we take the weights times the values. And then we divide it by the sum of the weights. So 5 times 3 plus 3 times 4 plus 4 times 4 plus 3 times 2 all over 5 plus 3 plus 4 plus 3. So her GPA is 3.27. Okay. And then Michael and Kevin went back to the candy store and they want to do the same idea. Again, uh, once again here the weights are actual weights so the weights are 2.5 4 and 2 and then the values are actual values so dollars per pound so 0 0.3 1.3 4.5 and 3.73 so this would be 2.5 times 1.3 let's use parentheses here because it's a little confusing with the decimals 4 times 4.5 and 2 times 3.73 all over 2.5 plus 4 plus 2. And so I get $3.38 per pound. Okay, so that's it for this lecture video. Uh, if you have any questions, as always, feel free to email me or uh, shoot me a remind message. Uh, don't forget to do your homework and the quizzes. And uh, as always, uh, if you're in a class that has a class meeting, uh, make sure you come to class to ask questions. Uh, or if you're in a class that uh, does not have class meetings, make sure you're participating in the discussions.